folks. Today I'm doing a railway spike for him and the gang. Uh, they've got a young fellow who's interested in getting into uh, blade smoothing. So what I've got is a railway spike in here. Uh, railway spikes. Uh, one of these. Dog spike, whatever you want to call them. So I got one in there, heated up. I've already twisted it. I'll show you how to twist it in a little while. But uh, this is um, what we've got here at the moment. So starting to get it roughed out. Just getting it hot up. I'm using my gas for today. Um, wind's up a little bit, so I'm actually not allowed to use it once uh, the wind's over 15 kilometres an hour or about 10 mile an hour uh, for spark risk. Uh, we're in a dry area here on the edge of the little desert, and um, yeah, I've got to obey the rules. So sorry for not using the charcoal today, but. Um, yeah, I gotta go with the flow, eh? Alright, back in a sec. Alright, to form your handle, it's simple. Just a nice twist. So get your spike nice and hot, nice cherry red. Grab your silson. Watch out when you're doing this because a, a little bit of slag and that'll all fly everywhere. One, they're red hot. Two, they're generally very sharp and crystalline. So if they get in your eyes, you're in real strife. Easiest way to do it, uh, I wear glasses. And that, but always wear safety goggles and always wear gloves. Make sure your sleeves go down inside your gloves. Otherwise you end up like forearms like mine. Covered in a whole pile of little uh, scars. If I can get that right. It's a nice formed handle. Ready to be thrown back in, and we'll start working this in. be working with three different types of hammers. First one, square mallet, like this, so a nice square sharp edge. Second one's a uh, light sledge, it's only a baby, three pounder. I give up working with the eight pounders uh, a while back, I got a crook shoulder, I'm getting a bit old. Next one's a rabbit and hammer. Call, don't know why they call it a rabbit hammer, but anyway, it looks more like an axe. Nice fine end at the, at the front, simple work and square face at the back. We use this one to move metal about, so to form the shape, get it in there, um, makes a big divot, and you just work that divot all the way along. 
because it goes in deep and penetrates like an axe. It's easy to work. So first one up here, I'll just move this around and focus it back on the end. First one, our square hammer. Now see how its placement is there, about halfway through, because we want to push metal down. Flip me back over, work the other side. Working so it's nice and even. See how it's slowly drawing out, thinning down? It's actually getting thicker along there. So we'll put that back in the heat. You may think, well, that, that's a lot of effort for very little result. Um, you do that maybe 30 times. Both sides, just keep on working it down. Sooner or later, she'll come across. All right. Well, I've done that a little while when I'm short cutting here, and that just, uh, I don't know if you can tell by the light, but it's uh, getting a little bit overcast here, so I'm pushing for the weather. So that's where we're up to at the moment. With that twisted up. If I'm working. Now when I'm hitting this, I'm actually hitting, if I can get that lined up, like that on an angle. So you can see there, slightly raised up. So what I'm trying to do now is force that little bit down there to drop down a little bit further. A lot easier now with the rabbit and hammer. Get the tongs to hold, I might have missed the window here. So it makes those deep grooves in there, but it forces it out. That's what we're after. got a railway line uh, anvil at home and that, you can just use the, the slow curve of the edge to do the same thing. What slowly do is hitting it on the slightly there on the horn. So what it's doing, you see all these little divots going across. That's slowly stretching the blade out. Throw 
back of your feet so you keep it fairly straight. I don't know if you can see that. A bit hard to stand in front of the behind here so I can actually see what I'm doing. The sun's out of it, uh, for the moment. Wind's picking up though. Um, so you can see that there. So what I'll do now is I'll throw it back in under the heat for a few seconds because the blade will heat up a lot faster now that it's thinner. impregnate the carbon down to about uh, a sixteenth of an inch in depth into the steel. Uh, so that's both sides if you if you plunge it in. Simple trip to doing that is get the dirtiest, filthiest diesel oil that you can find. Go out if you know a truck driver or a farmer who's got big diesel uh, motors, when they change their oil and they can go out and get some of that. I've got some in a, an old champagne bucket over there that I'm going to dip this into. Make sure your blade's not warped. This one's starting to bend a little bit, so I'll give it a quick tap. Get it nice and straight. I'll turn this around here. And take the glow off. Now what this will do is add carbon to the steel, so it will hold a lot better edge than it would do natively. Plunge it in. up there. Still smoking. I'll let that cool down for 15-20 minutes. 
and then we'll start grinding it. All right, so this is the knife now as it stands. Not quite a knife yet, but as you can see there, oh, the sun's coming back out. Just waves and waves and waves. So I've got my dunking tank down here. It's a stainless steel Japanese ice cream uh, drum. Uh, the grinder's over here. Um, yeah, it's a big one. You don't have to go that big. You can buy a uh, little one by 30 inch grinders for about uh, uh, 200 bucks Australian and that, but I've seen them in the US for about $149 at the Harbour Freight. Um, and they come with a good range of belts. What I've got on here is a Norton Blaze. Uh, it's an 80 grit. I'm just going to mount the camera back up. First up is shake the blade. Now the water starts running off the, the coated pearl. what we've got at the moment. I won't work that point yet. You make too fine a point early on, uh, it, it can over overheat the tip and get soft. I don't know if you can see that. I'll get behind the camera and see if I can line it up. Um, I've got about, oh, probably about eight to ten thou of an inch flat section along here. I've actually got a little bit on the edge there that's starting to fur up. That means I've actually got an edge there. And because this is so coarse, it's not making it... Um, uh, smooth, it's actually going to feather it out. So what I'll do is I'll swap the belt over. And I'll go from an 80 grip down to a 150. Uh, 180, close enough. Make sure my direction of belt direction is right. 
the way they lay down the grip on the belts. It's actually quite important. And instead of having the flatten behind the grind, I'm going to go freehand now. Not a bad edge. Still a bit coarse. So now we go down to about uh, what have I got there handy? 320. Again, make sure your direction of your belt is going around the right way. much on that. Now I'm going to pick it up out of here and I'll go over my little lean-to shed over here and I didn't think this through. This is a, a little cheap 1 by 30 inch belt grinder. Now I used one of these for years. You don't have to spend big bucks on that to get into the I'm just going to sit that up in there and see what I can do here. I might prop that up a little bit there, like that, to get a better angle. And uh, see what we can get here. This one's got a 600 uh, grip belt on What I use to make things sharp with it. Um, buffalo hide leather and it's, it's taken strips off of that quite nicely. So we'll come back out here. Thankfully we've got a bit of sunshine. So what we've got now is a half decent little knife that's taken around about all up uh, about two hours. Oh, clouds are coming and going, but um, yeah, it's quite functional. You can clean it up. Um, about all I'd probably do, and that is take that back in there, make it a little drop point, take that back on an angle from the tip there, uh, but repetitively dip it because once you start grinding that fine end and that it can overheat, you'll see it go blues and yellows and all that sort of thing. Uh, about all that thing needs on it now is a quick spray if you've got some spray canola oil um, which is what I use a lot here um, you can tell this cheap black and gold so that's two, uh, two bucks a can um, if you really want to get into it uh, it's a little bit down in here Just run it 
run it over the edge. Now, because it's still warm from the grinder, that's uh, thinning out quite nicely. Get a rag. Wipe off your excess. Now, the black colour, uh, which is from the oil, but it's also the carbon that's in the oil. That's why I'm saying using the most dirtiest, filthiest oil that you can find, preferably off a of diesel. Because that carbon will soak into the metal about a sixteenth of an inch. Now that blade's just under an eighth of an inch. So it, it's penetrated both sides of there and now got a good edge holding capability. Um, I'll get a piece of paper here. So I can put that there and just show you. See that. That's a quite a, a nice functional little knife. So just using the hammer, well actually three hammers, and that all have got their own functions. This is my main working hammer. This is good for shaping, this is good for flattening and for spreading. So you don't need a lot of equipment. Here's my little charcoal forge which I couldn't use today. But as you can see, I use it quite often. Um, I cheat. I've got an old washing machine a motor in there, so instead of having the hand crank blower on the back up here, um, I've got a belt uh, and a pulley attached down to there. A very old light switch. It's old Baker light, so it's probably turned to a century. Um, and I've used that most, most of the time. You can see I've got a goodly supply of stuff there. So, you don't need a heck of a lot of equipment. Something like that makes life a hell of a lot easier. And uh, you actually use it in wind because it doesn't throw sparks around like the, the charcoal blades. But, um, yeah, as you can see, I've got a few here ready to work. Uh, get ground up. This one here, because it's been ground the opposite way, I'll turn into a fork. So that one, I'll split that there with an angle grinder down there, spread it apart, shape it up, and that'll be a fork. So it can go along with a knife. Uh, a lot of the Grey Nomad folks and that like their um, cast iron cooking pots over the campfire. Excuse my firewood mess, I've just been out collecting a load of firewood. Um, I like recycling, I've got a little supply here of uh, railway spikes as you can see, do a few, a few of them. Spring steel, beautiful thing to work with, um, easy to get, uh, that uh, selection just in there might get uh, 40 little knives, maybe 50 just out of that one section there. So in that pile there, there could be a thousand knives, I don't know. We've got a few more railway spikes over here. And um, yeah, I've got bits and pieces all over the place. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll try to edit this the best way I can now. And um, Hopefully you'll enjoy it. You all take care. Em and the gang. And I'll catch you online. Cheers.